I was looking at some questions on Facebook, and I found one that really surprised me. The question didn't surprise me, but the answers did. At least 70% of the answers were wrong. I find it hard to believe that so many gardeners misunderstand fertilizer. Here's the question. Is there a reason not to use miracle Grow plant food? Or is this just an organic thing? Now, if this question had been asked in the organic gardening group, the answers wouldn't surprise me so much. That group does believe in a lot of misinformation, but this question was asked in a general gardening group. What I'd like to do in this video is have a closer look at some of the comments that were made and explain why they're wrong. It's really important for gardeners to better understand nutrients and what is going on in the soil and how do fertilizers really work in the soil. Because the question was asked about miracle Grow, and it is a popular fertilizer, I will use it as an example. But almost everything in this video applies to any synthetic fertilizer. Several of the comments focus on the fact that synthetic fertilizers are chemical. Let's have a look at a couple of these. miracle Grow is a synthetic fertilizer that contains urea derived from ammonia. It is dangerous if consumed. Now, you might be thinking that ammonia is that stuff you have in the house that's quite toxic. Here's another one. Poisoning yourself and families with chemicals. No too smart. I think they meant to say not too smart. Let's have a closer look at the chemicals that are in this product. Now, there are actually several different miracle Grow fertilizers, so I'm going to pick on the most common one, the 20-20-20. And here's the label from the back of the package. Now you'll see all kinds of chemicals here. Phosphate, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc. Now if you have a close look at the label, you'll also see a caution there. It says use this product as recommended. It may be harmful if misused. Nobody's telling you to eat the fertilizer. So a comment like it is dangerous if consumed is really silly. Nobody's going to eat this stuff. Let's have a closer look at these chemicals. They sound like a lot of the nutrients plants need, and in fact, that's what they are. Now, here's another list. This is the daily nutrient requirement for us humans. Now, if we have a look at this list, you'll see that it's pretty much the same as the last list. Zinc, manganese, iron, copper, boron, potassium. All of these are nutrients that both animals and plants need. These are not toxic substances. These are the things that are keeping you and I alive. We need those, and plants need them as well. This idea that every chemical is toxic and poisonous is so stupid. Your body is made up of chemicals. You need those chemicals in your food to stay alive. Now let's go back to this label for miracle Grow. There is one unusual chemical on there, and it's called EDTA. It's a chelating agent. What chelating means is that it just makes other nutrients in there soluble. So it makes things like iron more available to plants. So how dangerous is EDTA? Well, here's the molecular formula for it. It has some nitrogen, some oxygen, some hydrogen. And where those lines meet, those are carbon molecules. All of those are elements we have throughout our whole body. Now, looking at a formula, it doesn't tell you how toxic the material is, but there's nothing unusual in this. So what are some other uses for EDTA? Well, it turns out that EDTA is routinely used as a medical treatment. It's used to clean our blood. You can go to the pharmacy and buy a bottle of this stuff. I think it's pretty clear that EDTA is not that harmful, or we wouldn't be using it in these various ways. So if you look at the ingredient list of miracle Grow, there's nothing in there that should cause you concern. Quite a few of the comments had to do with microbes. Did you know that synthetic chemicals kill microbes? Here are some of the comments. Microbes hate the hot inorganic fertilizer miracle Grow uses. I'm not sure what they mean by the word hot here. There's nothing in this formulation that's hot. The word can be used to describe toxic things, but there's nothing in here that are toxic. Here's another one. It contains copper sulfate, which kills off healthy bacteria in the soil 
leading to decline in overall produce in your garden. Copper sulfate is used to kill fungi. It's actually a fungicide that's used on plants. So it does harm microbes, but it only does that at very high concentrations relative to what we have in soil. The dose makes the poison. Copper sulfate in high concentrations may harm microbes, but in low concentrations, it's actually beneficial, as you'll see in a second. Here's another one. It's not good for your soil as it kills a lot of the microbes in healthy soil. So will miracle Grow harm microbes? Well, let's look at how they're grown in the lab. You might recognize this Petri dish. You see it on TV all the time. This is how laboratories grow microbes. It allows them to detect which ones are there and also to quantify how many they have. The microbes grow in this dish because special food has been laid in the bottom of the dish. And the microbes eat that and live on that food. So what is in that food? There are lots of different formulations, but here's one of them. If you look down the list, you'll see that this list is very similar to the nutrients that you and I need. Microbes use the same things as plants and humans to live. Copper, boron, manganese, iron phosphate, potassium, nitrogen. These are all essential nutrients to grow microbes. Here's a study that looked at the microbe population, the microbiomass, after adding either synthetic fertilizer or organic fertilizer. And they looked at both the top six inches of soil and the bottom six inches of soil. And here's what they found. The amount of microbes in the soil treated with synthetic fertilizer was the same as the control. The control is soil that wasn't treated at all. Soil that had organic material put on seen a slight increase in the number of microbes. Organic fertilizer is microbe food, and that's why they start growing and multiplying. That's why you have more. But the important message here is that synthetic fertilizer did not reduce the population. It had no effect on the population. Another study by Agriculture Canada came to this conclusion. Nitrogen applied according to soil test recommendations had minimal long-term detrimental consequences for soil microbes, soil biochemical properties, or soil structures. And these are the results for a 10-year study. There's lots of science out there that says fertilizer does not harm microbes in soil. And that makes sense. Remember, the nutrients that are in the fertilizer are actually nutrients that microbes need. It's microbe food. If anything, this fertilizer is keeping the microbes alive. Several comments dealt with the idea that synthetic fertilizer are salt. Salt is toxic to plants. Growing organic is growing normal. The quality of your plants will far exceed anything you can grow with that other stuff aka the synthetic fertilizer. I see this comment a lot. People equate synthetic fertilizer with salt, and I understand why. Unfortunately, we use the word salt to mean two different things. The general population uses it to refer the stuff on the kitchen table, sodium chloride. Salt is also used in winter on our roads to get rid of the ice, and in a lot of places that's also sodium chloride. A chemist uses that word differently. To a chemist, a salt is a compound made up of ions. Now, if you want to learn more about ions, have a look at this blog post I wrote. It discusses the concept of ions and salt in detail. To keep things simple for this video, have a look at this list here. This is the list we looked at before. It's the daily requirements for you. And you'll see things on here like potassium and magnesium and calcium and iron. Well, those terms aren't really quite correct. Iron is a metal. I mean, we don't go around chewing on iron bars. Copper, you recognize that as well as a metal. Many of these other things are also metals. Phosphorus is a metal as well, and it's explosive. 
and we could never eat phosphorus. So although we use these words to describe the nutrients we need to eat, we don't actually eat these things. We eat the salts of these things. We eat copper salts. We eat iron salts, magnesium salts, calcium salts, potassium salts. All of these will be in a salt form format inside our bodies. They're also in a salt format inside plants and inside microbes. None of these organisms use the original metal. They use the salt of the metal. When we use the word in that context, meaning something other than table salt. Those things are not toxic to plants, microbes, or animals, unless they're in really large amounts. Everything becomes toxic if the concentration is high enough. I mean, plain water will kill you if you drink enough. It's toxic if you drink enough. But in reasonable amounts, the amounts we use in fertilizers, these things are perfectly safe. There is no salt in this kind of fertilizer that's hurting your plants, provided you apply it in the right amount. What about table salt? That's sodium chloride. Well, it turns out sodium is fairly toxic to plants, and so table salt will kill plants. And it's also toxic to us if we get too much. But we do need a certain amount, and even plants need a certain amount in their diet. Here's a product you might recognize. It's called Gatorade. And beside it, you'll see what it contains. It contains sodium and potassium. These are electrolytes. And they play a really important part in our bodies. They keep a lot of things functioning, particularly our brain and our synapses. We have to have the right ratio of sodium to potassium, and it's critical. When we exercise a lot, we sweat too much, we lose those electrolytes, so it's important to replace them. That's why a lot of these energy drinks include these kinds of salts because they're important for us. What about organic fertilizer? Things like compost and manure. Do they have salts? Well, yes, they do. They have a fairly low level of salts. Most of the nutrients are in large molecules and they're not available to plants. They're not in a salt format yet. Chemists call that an organic format. So nitrogen, for instance, is tied up in proteins. Plants can't use proteins. They can't get at that nitrogen. But during the decomposition process, those proteins, which are big, are slowly decomposed into smaller and smaller and smaller molecules until they become nitrate. And once they're nitrate, the plant can use them. And nitrate is also a salt. So organic fertilizer does produce salts. And until it does, plants can't get any benefit from it. Same with microbes. Microbes get most of their benefit once those proteins are decomposed into salt. Now, is there a difference between nitrate from organic source or a synthetic source? If you listen to a lot of organic proponents, you'd think, yeah, these are vastly different. But here's their molecular structure. On the left, you have organic nitrate, and on the right, you have synthetic nitrate. Can you spot the difference? No, there is no difference. Neither plants, nor microbes, nor labs can tell where that nitrate came from. Once it's a nitrate molecule, they're all the same. Organic fertilizer and synthetic fertilizer release the same type of salt, the same kind of nutrient. They both benefit plants and micro. There were lots of comments that went something like this. miracle Grow is owned by Monsanto. And Monsanto is a terrible company. It's polluting the earth. It's killing people. Don't use their products. Now, I understand where this is coming from. People hate Roundup. And they associate Roundup with Monsanto. Anything Monsanto does is terrible. And since Bayer bought Monsanto, the same conclusion can be made about Bayer. It's a terrible company. People are making several mistakes here. First of all, just because you hate Roundup doesn't mean that every product a company makes is bad. That's just silly. Bayer is mostly a pharmaceutical company who makes all kinds of useful drugs that keep us alive. Monsanto makes a wide range of both chemicals and seeds, and they're feeding a huge percentage of the population. 
it can't all be bad. Now, the thing about Miracle Grow that I find really funny is that Monsanto doesn't own Miracle Grow. It's actually owned by a company called Scotts. Now, Scotts did sell Roundup in the U.S., and so they had an association with Monsanto. But Monsanto doesn't own Scotts. It's okay to hate Roundup or to even hate Monsanto if you have some good reasons. But at least take the time to understand what those reasons are. Here's one more comment I'd like to look at. We all know our waters are polluted, but did you know that synthetic agricultural fertilizers are the one main culprit for our polluted streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans? Really? What about all the people that live in cities? They're buying all kinds of products, soaps, deodorants, all kinds of manufactured products. We eat all kinds of food and then we crap it down the toilet. Don't you think any of those things cause pollution? Now it's true, overuse of fertilizers in agricultural fields is a problem, but it really doesn't matter whether you use synthetic fertilizer or organic fertilizer. They both result in nutrients running into the water system and polluting our lakes and rivers. A big problem in agriculture is the use of manures. If you spread too much manure or you spread it at the wrong time, the rain washes it into our rivers. The problem is too much fertilizer, not the source. Both organic and synthetic both have the same problem. There are some real benefits to using an organic fertilizer, but there are also benefits for the synthetic fertilizer. Synthetic fertilizer is available immediately to plant, so that's best in cases where you have a deficiency. If you're missing potassium in the soil and your plants are struggling, you want to get that potassium to them as quickly as possible. Synthetic does a good job of that. Organic doesn't. Organic takes weeks and months to release that material into the soil. Synthetic is a fast feed and at certain times it's the best option. Organic is a long, slow feed and for long-term soil building, it's the better option. They both have their place. Now, if you want to learn more about garden myths, have a look at this video right here. This video is going to save you money because you'll buy less products. I guarantee it. Have fun in the garden.